Folks, in this video today, I want to talk about the evolution of the Buccaneers' offensive line between last year and this upcoming season, because I really do believe we are entering a new era of offensive line play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You have lost a couple of pieces along that offensive line from the past couple of seasons. Ali Marpet retired last offseason. You released Donovan Smith, your starting left tackle, this offseason. You traded away Shaq Mason, your starting right guard, this offseason as well. And you have moved around a handful of guys along your offensive line, and really there's going to be a lot of new starters. So I wanted to dive into this new look of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line and talk about why this could end up being a very good evolution for the Buccaneers as as they enter this new era. Let's go ahead and just go straight down the line. No pun intended with that. Starting off with left tackle now, Tristan Wirfs. And a lot of people were contemplating and speculating throughout the entirety of this offseason. What were the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to do at the left tackle position after the team released Donovan Smith. There was a lot of speculation that they could draft a left tackle, that they could sign one in free agency, or that they could potentially move Tristan Wirfs from right tackle over to left tackle. Now, on paper, the idea of moving Wirfs over seems like a no-brainer. If Wirfs is phenomenal as a right tackle, and we all know that he is one of the best, if not the best right tackle in the entirety of the NFL, then seems like he'd be able to make a move over to left tackle, no problem. But based on what many people have said, be it offensive linemen themselves, offensive line coaches, that move can be a difficult process to make, moving from the right side of the offensive line to the left side of the offensive line, specifically at the tackle position. However, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be taking up that challenge. They have essentially pretty much confirmed that Wirfs will be moving over from right tackle to left tackle. We'll talk about who is replacing Wirfs at right tackle in a little bit, but this is going to be the most crucial part of the Buccaneers' offensive line. If this Wirfs situation does not work out and he does not excel at playing left tackle, the team could certainly struggle in terms of blocking both in the running game and in the passing game. However, if Wirfs is able to have the same ability that he does as a right tackle over as a left tackle, the Bucks could very well have one of the best offensive lines in football. Point blank, simple as that. So that's going to be the biggest thing to pay attention to moving forward throughout the remainder of this offseason, preseason, regular season, is how is Tristan Wirfs going to be as a left tackle in his first year playing the position? If it goes well, I really think the sky is the limit for this offensive line. If it doesn't go well, well, that's certainly going to be a very big question mark moving forward. You could very easily move, move Wirfs back over to right tackle, but what would you do at that left tackle position at that point? It would become a very legitimate and very concerning question mark on the team. Moving on to left guard, you have a couple of guys here. I have Matt Filer on this list right now because it seems that all indications point to Matt Filer being one of the starting guards for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going into this upcoming season, or at the very least, you can pencil him in right now at this point. We'll talk about some other guys who will be competing for these starting guard jobs later on in this video, but Matt Filer is a veteran. He is a guy that has been around the block. He obviously played for the Pittsburgh Steelers for a handful of years. He played right tackle in those situations. He could be a candidate to replace Tristan Wirfs over at the right tackle spot, but but the past couple of years with the LA Chargers, he played left guard. And it seems like, at least moving forward, that is what Filer's position is going to be. And overall, Filer is a very capable, very solid offensive lineman. A good veteran addition that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made this offseason that did not cost them really much money at all. And I think overall, Filer can be a serviceable, quality starting guard for the Buccaneers, but... 
Also, I think that he is a better right tackle. And if they need to make that move and put Filer over at right tackle, that's going to be something worth paying attention to as well because it could just continue to improve the potential of this Bucks offensive line. Moving at the center position, you have Ryan Jensen. I don't got to tell you guys how good Ryan Jensen is. The loss of him early last year due to his knee injuries that he had sustained to his ACL and his MCL were absolutely devastating. The Buccaneers missed him sorely on that offensive line and while Robert Hainsey filled in very admirably at the center position Jensen is still one of the top centers in the league now how is he going to bounce back from those knee injuries that remains to be seen he did play a little bit towards the end of last year was able to be there for the Buccaneers playoff run but it still remains to be seen how is he going to do with a full workload a full off season a full preseason a full regular season back with that knee injury injury that's going to be a big question mark for the Buccaneers as well something to pay attention to if Jensen is able to return to form if he is able to stay healthy I have no doubt that he's going to continue to be one of the best centers in the NFL and just a really solid anchor for this Bucks offensive line moving on you have the right guard position specifically Robert Hainsey hey we just talked about this guy now before Robert Hainsey had to fill in at the center position for Ryan Jensen he was actually battling it out for the starting left guard position with a couple of guys that we'll talk about later on in this video but due to the Jensen injury Hainsey had to fill in as the team's starting center and overall I thought Hainsey did a pretty good Good job. I'm actually a very big Robert Hainsey fan. I think that he is a very solid, very capable offensive lineman that can give you some very, very quality snaps and I think can be a starting offensive lineman for you for the foreseeable future. I have him penciled in right now as this team's starting right guard. As I said, in the case of Matt Filer, it is going to be a competition, but I do think Hainsey certainly has an inside track and advantage, if you will, to be one of those starting guards, be it at left guard or at right guard. I say this because Hainsey has shown quality starting offensive line play for the Buccaneers already from this past season. I think that he did very well. He has that great versatility. He probably would have been the team's starting left guard at least last year if the Ryan Jensen injury had not occurred. So I do believe the coaching staff is very high on Hainsey. They have a lot of trust in him. They have a lot of optimism for him and his overall play. And I think that those are some very good benefits and some very good things moving forward regarding Hainsey and what he can give the Buccaneers as a potential starting guard. Finally, a couple more guys I want to talk about in terms of honorable mentions. Well, actually, I guess I should get to this. It's right tackle Luke Gedeke. I said that we were going to get to the guy who would be replacing Tristan Wirfs at that right tackle position. Right now, it seems like you can pencil in Luke Gedeke in that role. And I know a lot of people were upset with the former second round draft pick of the Buccaneers last offseason. He was initially the team's starting left guard after Hainsey got moved over to center. Gedeke was eventually benched slash injured, and another player had to come in, which we will discuss him in in a moment. But Gedeke, I think, did an overall good job whenever he did play right tackle. And whenever he was playing left guard in the early portion of the season, he was going up against an absolute gauntlet. I mean, Kenny Clark, Cam Hayward, a couple of other guys in there as well. I think Grady Jarrett was somewhere in that mix. He was going up against the best interior pass rushers in the entirety of the NFL. However, the final game of the year, they put him at right tackle. And as I just said, I think he did a service job at right tackle it was against the Atlanta Falcons who did not have the best pass rush in the world at the time but that is where Gedeke's natural position is and I think that is where he probably has the best chance to succeed here at the NFL level and it's going to be curious to see that's another big risk that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are taking if it isn't starting to work out with Luke Gedeke at right tackle maybe you move Matt Filer over and see how it goes from there but I think the Buccaneers are going to give their former second round pick a chance to succeed they've invested a lot of draft picks in recent years on their offensive line Luke Gedeke is a good example of that former second round pick Robert Hainsey is another good example of that former third round pick of course Tristan Wirfs former first round pick the Bucks have invested so so much in their offensive line Luke Gedeke being one of the latest additions there we'll talk about another guy in a moment but 
Let's pay attention to get a key. Let's see how he does. That could be another critical move here for the Bucks. If it does pay off, and get a key is a very, very good right tackle and shows great improvement, kind of like what Alex Kappa showed after his first couple of years in the NFL. Again, I think you could make an argument that the Bucks would have one of the better offensive lines in the entirety of football. If it doesn't work out, well, hey, you still have some fallback options. You still have Matt Filer there who you can move over to right tackle just in case. You have some good guard depth in there as well, just in case a guy like Luke Gedeke might need a little bit more time to develop. But I want to talk about some honorable mentions now, guys that are definitely going to be competing for starting opportunities here with this new Bucks offensive line. And the first guy I got to talk about is Cody Mock. Duh, right? Cody Mock was another former second round pick in this most recent NFL draft by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Started multiple games while at college, North Dakota State University. He played pretty much left tackle entirely in his collegiate career. I believe he started 57 games at left tackle, something along those lines. Played a little bit of right tackle as well. Well, but he projects to be an offensive guard in the league. And I think that ultimately he will definitely be competing with guys like Robert Hainsey and like Matt Filer for one of those starting guard positions. And look, I know he went to North Dakota State University. I know that he does come from a small school and that it may take some time for him to develop. But if he is able to show good progression in his rookie year and be a good starter right away, kind of like an Ali Marpet back in 2015, the Bucs have got some very good depth on their hands. Because if you have Matt Filer potentially as one of your backup guards, or Robert Hainsey potentially as one of your backup guards, that's a pretty good spot to be in for the Bucs. Just in case of injury, you've got insane amounts of interior offensive line depth and so much versatility as well. As I said, you could move Filer over to right tackle if you needed to. You could move Hainsey around. He could be a backup center or a backup guard. Heck, you could even move Luke Gedeke as a backup guard or a backup right tackle as well. I, I think that there are so many different possibilities there and I think that the Bucks really do have a luxury of the amount of depth that they have along the offensive line the fact that I have Cody Mock here as a guy who is just going to be battling for a starting guard spot and not just already being a guy that you can pencil in as a starter I think speaks volumes to the overall interior depth that the Buccaneers have and the amount of investment that they have made but there's also some other guys to mention as well firstly I want to talk about Aaron Stinney which I know we haven't mentioned him much but Aaron Stinney has been doing some things the past couple of years for the Buccaneers. Granted, this past offseason, he tore his ACL in a preseason game, I believe, that did not go very well, but he did play in 12 games for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or I guess I should say he did end up playing in 14 total games for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers so far from 2019 to 2021. He played in six games in 2020, six games in 2021. He started all three games for the Buccaneers in their Super Bowl run, and overall, I think he did a very serviceable job. He also played in two of their playoff games in 2021 during that playoff run as well. Stinney is a guy that I think could be a starting guard if you need him to. He's only 29 years old, about to be 30. He's got great size. He's got some experience, obviously, with the Buccaneers and being a part of this offensive line unit. And he was battling Robert Hainsey for that starting guard spot at the left guard position last year. Now, ultimately, it did end up being a really tricky situation with Stinney and Jensen going down with injuries, but I don't believe you should count out Stinney at all in these guard battles. I think that he's going to be doing a really good job returning from his injury. If he is able to come back fully healthy and back to form, much like in the case of, you know, guys that we talked about like Ryan Jensen, I think the Buccaneers are going to have, again, some really good interior depth on their hands. I also want to talk about another guy who's going to be battling for a guard spot, and that's Nick Leverett. And Nick Leverett's a guy that the Buccaneers re-signed this offseason, played in 11 games for the Buccaneers last year, started 10 of them, and while it wasn't always great, I think that Leverett was certainly a good upgrade for the Buccaneers, a little around the midway point of the season last year, obviously he started in more than half the games for the Bucs last year, but after Luke Gedeke struggles early on in the season, they made that switch to Nick Leverett, it was also because of injuries as well, but Leverett came in and I think he did a very serviceable job as this team's 
starting left guard in that role. He's got some pretty good starts under his belt. He's got some good experience under his belt. Has been with the team since 2021. Still very young. Only 26 years old. He's going to be another guy who's going to be battling with the likes of Robert Hainsey. With the likes of Matt Filer for one of those two starting guard positions. And while I still say you could probably give the edge here to a guy like Robert Hainsey and to a guy like Matt Filer, Nick Leverett's going to make it a very tough decision, I think. And given his experience, given the fact that you've got him on a cheap deal, at the very least, he is incredible depth with good starting ability in the past. He is also another guy who has got versatility to his game. People forget that he's also trained at center for the Buccaneers as well, just continues to show the level of depth that this team has. Now, I know what people are going to say. James, the Bucs have such good depth at the interior offensive line. What's going on at their tackle position? Well, first things first, I want to point out, yes, they have Luke Gedeke in that role now. Yes, they have Matt Filer, a guy that they can move over to right tackle if they need to. I think that that pretty much settles your right tackle situation. You've already got good depth there if you need to. But one guy I want to talk about here that I think a lot of people have kind of forgot about is Brandon Walton. And Brandon Walton's an interesting guy, right? Local guy, by the way. He is from Largo, Seminole, Florida. Went to Florida Atlantic. Really cool story with him. He actually ended up starting two games for the Buccaneers last year, playing in 11 total games after... Donovan Smith had been dealing with some injury stuff. He did not have the best couple of games in the world, but he got off to a pretty good start against the New Orleans Saints last year. People forget about that game. Walton played really well against some pretty tough defensive linemen that the Saints were throwing his way. And he's got experience, man. He really does. And he's only 25 years old. He's got good size, 6'5", 300. He is probably going to be your backup left tackle, possibly even your backup right tackle as well. And he's going to be your main backup swing tackle type of guy. You lost Josh Wells in free agency. I know that, you know, that was obviously a very divisive player there in Wells, but I think that Brandon Walton is a good, good young backup for the Bucks to have. And the Bucks, I think the most important thing here, whenever you talk about a new era, is the youth. Brandon Walton is 25 years old. Nick Leverett, who I talked about, is only 26 years old. You've got Cody Mock on this team now, who is only, uh, gosh, I don't know, 22, 23 years old, something along those lines. He's a very young offensive lineman. You have got Luke Gedeke, who is very, very young as well. He is in his early 20s. You have got Tristan Wirfs, who is another young offensive lineman. He is still in his early 20s. You have got Robert Hainsey, who is still in his early to mid 20s. Like the only two true vets you've got on this offensive line are Ryan Jensen and Matt Filer. And I guess you can also count Aaron Stinney in that mix as well. But, you know, I think the biggest thing to consider here is that, yeah, the Bucks really are truly going into a new era along their offensive line. They've got multiple guys who can play multiple positions. All those guys are young, but also still have starting caliber reps under their belt and can all just really have a great amount of potential and the Bucks have invested a lot of draft picks and a lot of time in growing and developing not just the starting portions of this Bucks offensive line but the depth pieces as well you've seen draft picks in the first second and third rounds of this Bucks offensive line you've seen a couple of free agent additions in there in the case of Ryan Jensen and in the case of Matt Filer and as I said First round pick Tristan Wirfs. You had third round pick Robert Hainsey. You had second round draft pick Luke Gedeke. You had another second round draft pick in Cody Mock. And then you had some good undrafted or free agent signings with guys like Aaron Stinney. You also had Nick Leverett in there. You also had Brandon Walton in there as well. So, folks. I am really intrigued by this Buccaneers offensive line. Really, really optimistic because if all this works out again, I really don't think it's a crazy thing to say that the Buccaneers will have one of the most promising, young, and better offensive lines in the entirety of football. But even if it doesn't work out, you have so many in every position, I guess I should say. You have so many guys with so much different types of versatility and so much good, young, growing developmental depth that I think the Buccaneers really are in a good spot for their offensive line for the next couple of years to come. But what do you guys think about this Buccaneers offensive line? Let me know your thoughts and opinions about it down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear them. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. And as always, folks, I'll see you on the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.